Right guys, welcome back. On my last video, I didn't do the um, player scores, player ratings, so here we go. Raya, three. Some people might think that's generous, but he was all right with his distribution and um, finding his players, but I'll leave it for now with Raya. Ben White, a six even though he was um, did a good overlap to uh, assist for the Gabriel Jesus game, goal, I think he was defensively poor and um, he hasn't been very good for a few games before his uh, injury. So uh, his little uh, couple of weeks off. Before that, he wasn't too good. We're going to have to... Be, he's going to have to start... Uh, Performing because with uh, Tommy Asu, we're hearing is going to be out till definitely over the Christmas period, and I heard rumor around the New Year, maybe even February. So Ben White better start improving. In fact, I gave the whole defence a six. Saliba and Gabriel for the first time, they were poor, and I thought. The uh, Luton Town forward was physical and uh, kind of bullied them. So it was a poor game from them. Kivior, like I said, they all got a six. So um, he looked like a centre-back playing at left-back. I chose him in my predicted lineup because I thought that for the physical side, if he won headers or just been stronger and won his duels maybe he would have got a different score and you can say he was doing his defensive duties but six is an average score so that's what Kivior's getting now to some positives Rice 10 man of the match I love the way he protected the back four sometimes dropping into the uh, back four Spraying the balls about, winning his tackles in a very, very physical game. And he hasn't been booked yet, so his timing of his tackles and interceptions are perfect. Doesn't give fouls away, rarely gives the ball away. So that's why he was my man of the match. And with that uh, last seconds goal from Martin Odegaard's beautiful cross. That's him. 10. That's what he is. He's 8 or 9 each game this season. And we've certainly had our money worth in the last 15 games since the beginning of the season. So, Rice is a, becoming a legend. The nearest thing we've had to Patrick Vieira, in my opinion. Right. Havertz, best game. I was actually, at times in the game, thinking, oh, he could be a man of the match, but I chose Rice for obvious reasons. Havertz, like I said, had his best game of the season in the, for, in the Arsenal shirt and got a goal again. Don't worry, I won't sing the song. But he is worth... The 65 million, it wasn't spent, it wasn't put down the drain. Have that scores again. Didn't sing it though. Right. Odegaard, 7 slash 8. But I'm going to give an 8 because of that pure... He receives the ball of Sinchenko and a moment of magic. It takes one piece for a player, one second to produce a moment of magic and he certainly did a delightful cross headed in by Declan Rice and to give us the winner we took all three points back to North London I thought Saka give him an eight I thought he was good worked hard had like always fouled 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 and by 
put some good corners in, good crosses, and he uh, played well, and it was great thinking when he set up Martinelli for his goal. So he's got an eight. Uh, Gabriel Jesus well, gave an eight too. He scored. He worked hard up front, laying the balls off, done everything he was asked to up there. So um, I thought we played really, really well. Skillful, unlucky a couple of times, especially there was one where uh, he was going to shoot and then his left foot just touched it, which is unlucky, and it went off for a goal kick. But um, he played well and, like I said, got his goal. Martinelli, he did get fouled a lot, but I don't think it was the best game, even though he scored a goal. So I'm going to give him a seven. So uh, that's my player ratings. I'm going to give the subs. I normally give them a five, but I'm going to give Sinchenko a seven because I think he come on and uh, changed the game and was vital to us getting three points. And Trossard, I'll give him a six because he was lively, was having shots and um, putting the pressure on the uh, Luton defence by being lively and having creating chances. So that's my player ratings. If you uh, agree, put in the comments, or if you disagree, put in the comments. I have noticed through my analytics that um, there's a certain percentage of people that are watching the videos that aren't subscribed. So like and subscribe, please. I beg you. Right. Now what I'm going to do is going to go on to... Um, ah, a piece of... Actually, there's a piece of... Um, on a forum site about Declan Rice. And it's linked in to well because he got man of the match and he got a 10. So I'm just going to read this off some notes I wrote down in light of the unfortunate robbery of West Ham United, we are asking Arsenal fans to come together to compensate the underpayment of Declan Rice. It has become evident in the last 15 weeks Arsenal were beneficiaries of 25 million underpayment to West Ham United. That's on a GoFundMe page of a uh, Arsenal forum, how true it is, I think it's just a bit of banter. But apparently they've raised £35 already, and that was only put up two days ago. That shows we robbed West Ham. Right, and when you think about it, Enzo at Chelsea and Caicedo, what were they worth both together? Rice is dub double, triple that. Right, what I'm going to do, look at uh, yesterday's results and run through them. So Brighton won 2-1 at Brentford. Crystal Palace lost to Bournemouth. Fulham battered Forest 5-0. Shame about this result. Sheffield United lost to Liverpool 2-0, which puts us... to. Then two points behind us in the table. I'll go into that in a minute. Villa, who we're playing on Saturday, 5.30, beat Man City, which was a bit of a shock, but Villa are in great form. Beat Man City, 1-0. But Man City were missing, I believe, Rodri, Doku and um, Jack Grealish for the game. But I didn't watch that. I had a friend round, Harry. Dropped your name into a bit of content, son. And we watched the um, mid-table derby. Manchester United, Chelsea. And Manchester United beat Chelsea 2-1 in the end. And it was... Um, Chelsea were poor, I think. And... Um, so are Manchester United, really, but um, I thought we would end up a draw. 
But I would say Cole Palmer is a player. But anyway, looking at the league table, Arsenal are 36 points with a goal difference of 19. Liverpool, like I said, are only two points behind with a goal difference of 20, so they're on 34 points. Villa, who we play next, are on 32 points. So it'd be interesting when we play them what the score will be. It's a must-win game. At Villa Park, it's going to be loud. It's a 5.30 kickoff, so under the lights. So um, it's going to be a tough one. The Villa fans are going to be loud. And also, there's an Arsenal-Villa uh, connection. Arteta versus Emery. Who's the better manager? Well, we all know Mikko Arteta is. And let's get one over our old manager, Emery. Because he'll be loving that. Where we sacked him. So, um, yeah, we've got to win. It's a must-win game. Tonight, Everton are playing Newcastle. And Spurs are playing West Ham. Which should be, I reckon... A, Thriller. Spurs could um, oh they could go level on points with Man City, but um, they got an inferior goal difference, so um, they won't go above them. But they could go level on points with them if they uh, beat West Ham. So right, just gonna have a slurp. Right, I'm going to get into the um, Aston Villa game, which I just spoke about, the importance of it. Well, we need to win and hope earlier at the 12.30 kickoff, Crystal Palace take points off of um, Liverpool as well. That'd be lovely. But this Villa game, they're in great form and... Even though against Tottenham, when I saw them play, they didn't look that great, but because of Tottenham's defensive frailties, Tottenham were winning, and then uh, Ollie Watkins, I think it was, that uh, scored some goals. And um, But Villa are a strange team. They're in form, and they find themselves in third place. Looking at the league, sorry about looking at the notes, how unprofessional. But, so, I hope um, Liverpool lose to uh, Crystal Palace and the tough one. What team will I predict we will play? With the news that uh, Tommy Asu's out until he missed the Christmas period, but I've got a sneaky feeling it's going to go into the new year. And maybe even February. So, um, and then there's the Ramsdale Raya debate. I think, I know goalkeeper's a different position. And it's like a weird position and they like have their union and all that. But um, I do think Raya got his smile back. But they stick together. And a lot of goalkeepers say that they do that and they train well. And they, even with opposition goalkeepers, there's the union. But he's got to be chomping at the bit to get back in now after that performance. For the first time, I'm not sure, because I always thought Ra was Arteta's number one. And Arteta can be uh, stubborn. But, um, as I said, for the first time, I'm really not sure about um, what he will do. There's the option of him, Raya starting at Villa, we play him through it. Then give um, Ramsdale the 
the Champions League game against PSV? Or will we uh, start Ramsdale against Villa? Then Villa fans probably be on uh, Ramsdale's back. And as we've got our old goalkeeper in goal, the Argentinian Emi Martinez. I think this is going to be a, a big call for um, Mikel Arteta, the goalkeeping. So um, I think... I actually think he's going to be stubborn about it. And he will play against Villa. David Rea will be playing through it. And Ramsdale will probably get the Champions League game in midweek and seeing how he does with that, whether he plays uh, the Premier League game against Brighton. So uh, that's what I think will happen. So I'm going with Ramsdale playing midweek and I'm going to start with Raya in goal against Villa. Benjamin White at right back because I ain't playing Cedric so it's Ben White and Saliba is an obvious choice and uh, picks himself and he can pick up himself and have a good performance get back to himself it's like against Luton was probably the worst game I've seen him ever play and he wasn't awful and that just sums up who he is. He's normally an 8, 9, 10 rating every week. And uh, get back to that Saliba, I'm sure you will. And Gabriel do the same. So they definitely start at the um, their partnership. You've got to have a great defensive partnership. But I'm wondering, I did see a little look. Um, against Luton from Saliba but I don't know if that was just me where um, he seemed really frustrated in the second half when um, uh, Raya um, I think it was when he dropped the cop definitely one of the goals he conceded in the second half and I think it was the corner and he, in his eyes his body like whole like positioning like how he felt there was a look at him looking at him thinking didn't say anything but he looked frustrated so we don't know if what like the defenders they always want a good goalkeeper behind them and we don't know if they think that's Ramsdale or Raya but there was something in it um Saliba's Look, that he didn't say anything, but just suggesting, oh my God, it's happened. Don't know if it's that. So I'm just thinking, which one do they prefer? We never know, unless they publicly say, which I doubt they will. So them two in defence, and Sinchenko will come back in at left back, I do believe. He played, uh, as long as he can sort his defence out, defensive side to his game out, he will, um, I think it'll be all right. But, uh, yeah, because going forward and going into the midfield inverting, he's brilliant at And passing the ball, going forward, setting up the wingers, the forwards, creativity, he's brilliant at So... Hopefully he will get um, back to that. And um, excuse, just having a like I said. I hope he gets back to that. So uh, I think he will start. Um, Rice will definitely start. Um, bring it on every game. Like I said, he's brilliant. So uh, win your battles. Don't get a yellow card. Now I've said that he'd probably get a yellow card. He hasn't had one for 15 games. 
But um, hopefully not. And um, just play the game you play. And it will be alright. As you're the best uh, midfielder in the Premier League. 100%. Odegaard will come, stay. Captain Odegaard will stay. I want a little bit of a better performance. But he, like I said earlier in the video, he was good, but he can he can push on. He can push on. So uh, have a cracking performance from Odegaard as captain, and I think Havertz will uh, keep his place on a goal scoring run. Played really well, like I said against uh, Luton, and he played himself back into the game. And uh, I think he, like I said, I think he'll start. And hopefully he will um, score again. And he, uh, what he does do when Odegaard sometimes doing his trickery and taking his time with it, he moves the ball straight on. And um, is it quicker than it was before? He always moved it on. And he can go up top as well when Declan Rice and um, if we're in possession... In, and Tinchenko's inverting and we get that midfield he goes higher when we got an extra player in midfield so he can win aerial balls and uh, hold it up so I think he, he will be employed in that because Mikko Arteta does like versatile players that can play in all sorts of positions within the game Martinelli this was a tough one for me, whether I bought Trossard, because Martinelli, the last couple of games, hasn't um, been himself. Don't know if it's anything to do with uh, going away on international duty, anything like that. But, um, or he's got niggles, he likes to play through. It's, it was a tough one for me, but I think he'll keep his position. Trossard's knocking at the door. And I think here uh, Trossard won't make it. He'd be on the bench. And um, Gabriel Jesus will play up front. Hope he scores again. Get on a scoring roll. Get a little run together. and um, But keep playing what you do in the false nine position. Working hard, skillful, creating chances for others. And I would like to see our free-flowing football come back, but to be defensively solid and do not concede. Don't want any mistakes on the goalkeeper front. That's if uh, he picks Raya or Ramsdale. But like I said, I think he'll pick Raya. And uh, I think it's going to be a tight one under the lights. I'd say we will sneak it 2-1, hopefully. And the goal scorers will be Martin Odegaard and Saka. I think we will uh, be a threat down the right-hand side with Ben White improving on his uh, play with Saka, overlapping like he did against Luton. And being defensively sound, but supporting Saka and that Martin Odegaard in that little triangle they do. And uh, on the other side, Sinchenko doing the same, going into the midfield and linking up well with um, Martinelli and Jesus and Havertz. But um, yeah, it's going to be 2-1. I've told you my predicted scorers. But really, I don't care who scores. So that's it. 2-1 to the Arsenal. Hopefully, stay top of the league. It's a massive, massive, massive game. We cannot drop points. If we want to go through the Christmas period and into the new year, top of the league, Man City are dropping points. This is a big chance. Hopefully Liverpool, like I said, will drop points.
Come on, Arsenal. We can do it. Come on, Arsenal. Stay top of the league. We are top of the league. So 